we didn't have a feral hog problem here until Rita in 2005. These feral hogs has learned what an alligator nest is, especially on the levees or irrigation canals that we have where they put some nests close to the canals. They'll go there and eat the eggs. It just leaves a shell of the egg. A feral hog, it's like a, the tallow tree or yopon that's not native here that, that's just taken over the chenilles. was told to me many years ago, uh, wild pigs are a sport utility vehicle for disease and parasites. They move them across the landscape. Um, really no good comes of them once they move into an area. Louisiana has had small populations of wild pigs for many years. Um, there are two particular basins that the pigs lived in for two to three hundred years they didn't spread. Um, as sport hunting became more popular, people put these pigs in trucks and moved them to other areas. Their exponential reproductive capacity led to this just huge explosion of wild pigs on the landscape. Pigs are eating little frogs in vernal pools. They're, they're eating ground nesting bird eggs, snakes. Basically, basically a pig has a three inch environmental vacuum on the front of his face and <laughs> anything in front of it's going down. Uh, and a lot of that damage goes unseen by the public eye because it may be in the middle of the woods somewhere, you know, uh, but that does have a value. Our marsh is the front line defense for all of the storms we get, all of the hurricanes we get. And if the hogs are, are rooting uh, in the marsh, when the water comes in from the hurricanes, it causes erosion on a faster level. The other uniqueness would be alligator nest. I know uh, Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries did a survey several years ago, and I think they, were, they showed 600 nests uh, were destroyed by hogs. Each egg is worth about $20, and each nest probably averages around 30 eggs or more. So it's a big economic impact when they're destroying all of our nests. Pigs don't really damage rice throughout the growing season. They, they really damage it in certain stages. Like right now, it's it, rice starting to head out here in South Louisiana. They'll forage on it then, root in the fields, messing stuff up. And a lot of farmers, they'll usually harvest two crops of rice and then they'll run crawfish traps right through there and the crawfish are feeding on that forage breaking down in the rice fields. Pigs rooting up this levee and it's causing damage to multiple aspects of agriculture in South Louisiana. We use an integrated approach and we sort of put the decision making in the hands of our field guys. They've all got thermal. We use net traps, we use corral type traps. Uh, all of our traps now are either whole sounder or multi sounder removal. We can remove hogs to the point that the damage is more acceptable to people. Uh, where they're not losing their entire livelihoods. I'm always in the back of my mind, some disease maybe from a feral hog would get into my deer herd or Brahmin cattle. I know it's never happened, but you, you never know, and you know that these things are running around here with all kinds of diseases. Not only is it important that we remove these feral swine, but we surveil for these diseases to help protect our pork production and trade, as well as protect our wildlife populations. So after the removal of swine, we collect biological samples to perform disease surveillance. Now there's two kind of categories of surveillance which we, um, our efforts are going towards. So there's foreign animal diseases such as classical swine fever and African swine fever that we ensure that these animals do not have. These are not prevalent in the United States. And so we ensure to ourselves, the USDA, as well as our trading partner, that these animals do not have these diseases so we can continue trade.
One of the other aspects that we do disease surveillance for is ensuring that some diseases that have been eliminated from commercial swine populations don't get reintroduced by feral swine. And so there's two diseases that we look out for when we collect biological samples. And this is swine brucellosis as well as pseudo rabies virus. I came here in 04 and I never would have dreamed that we would be doing full-time hog work because if you go back in the 90s and the early 2000s, people were still moving swine to different hunt and leases and that culture has changed now. The same people that were moving them and bringing them in to hunt now want them gone because the population increased and it started doing more damage than they were willing to accept. You know, I always sort of compare our jobs as public servants to uh, flower delivery. You know, people are having a bad day, uh, they're losing money, and we show up, they're mad, mad at the world, and we resolve their problem. That's the point of the game here. <laughs>